What's going on everybody? Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the Disciple Tag because if you did pay attention to the Marvel Strike Force blog, you would have no idea we are actually just a couple of days away from getting Pocket Dimension. Actually, by Monday night, Pocket Dimension will go live. If you didn't know this, can't blame you. There has been no in-game mail about this. There was a late blog post Friday night about it, but... Um, but yeah, most people who are not plugged into content creators or the website will have no idea that this that this pocket dimension is going to be here already. And we have it confirmed by Marvel Strike Force that it will require the disciple tag. So I'm just going to kind of go over who I'm using, who I think you will probably have, uh, you'll probably want to take in based on who you've built up in the past and just kind of break things down. So if you guys find this video helpful, you do enjoy it, make sure that like button, share and subscribe. Let's just dive right into it. So, this is the Disciple roster, and uh, talking to a lot of people in my cluster, they're a little worried because a lot of these characters, they don't have built up. I'm going to tell you right now, the best team, at least in my opinion, that's going to be worth taking in, is likely going to be your Dark Hunter slash Supernatural characters here with Ghost Rider, Morbius, Scarlet Witch, you bring in Night Nurse, and then you probably bring in one of the character, like Nick Fury, Black Widow, Iceman. Um... Yeah, but, you know, a lot of people haven't built up Dark Hunters. Strange Heartless is a going to be probably going to be a very good character here, but his campaign event doesn't start until after po Pocket Dimension begins. So most people will not have Heartless Strange for this. So, you know, you're kind of going through and you're trying to figure out, well, who do I have here that I can use? And there is some pretty good synergy with quite a few characters here. Like, for example, Black Widow, Fury, and Yo-Yo all have that shield tag, and there's some... Decent synergy between them. Yo-Yo, if you've got a decently built Yo-Yo, you can bring her in as long as you don't have protector characters, which most of these characters are not protectors. You bring in Yo-Yo, and you've got that passive right away where she's applying offense down on enemy turns, and it can't be dodged. So, you know, Yo-Yo, if you've got her built up, is probably going to be solid here because it's always cutting the enemy damage in half. But, you know, if if you're not a if you're a newer player, you probably haven't built her up too much. You will use her to unlock Ebony Mob, but uh yeah, you probably don't have her built up too much. The the issue is really gonna be in who who you got built up that I think uh that you're probably gonna use. And the one that really stands out to me here is gonna be Nick Fury and Iceman. Both these characters, you know, Iceman's part of the Astonishing X-Men team. It's your mutant go it's your go-to mutant raid team. You probably got Iceman built up. And, you know, every time that you apply speed down to the enemy team, or every enemy that has speed down on them, lowers their armor by 20%, which is not bad. Also, just their overall speed, obviously. But, you know, Iceman is going to also gain barrier with the speed down. So, he is a solid option to bring around, bring in altogether. You know, lower armor means they take more damage. Black Widow's probably one you've built up a little bit because you do have the skilletary going on with the training modules. And Nick Fury, you've probably been building him up because of the Omega Red Legendary. So those are three characters that you've probably built up a little bit just because of their viability in a few different game modes and being able to use them to help get some legendaries or just because they're valuable for different parts, aspects of the game. They're, they're, uh, they're versatile. So those are three characters I think most people will have built up that, um, that should do pretty well. There is some other nice synergy in here. Number, uh, right off the top of the, or what I'm thinking of right now, Magneto and Mystique. Uh, most players don't have these, but Mystique did just get a rework, and she got a little bit better damage, focus, etc. She did get a stat boost. She does a little more damage with her basic, with her attacks now as well. And if you bring her in with Magneto, she's copying positive effects from the enemy. She's, uh, she's tricking enemies to attack. She is, she got a nice little stat boost and a nice little rework with her kit here, but, you know, yeah, her and Magneto work very, very well together, and if you've got both of them, you may have your Emirators built up, you may be considering working on your Marauders with the Madeline Pryor uh, rival and the reworks for Marauders, so Mystique may be on your, on your docket to build up anyways, so this is now a good chance to start working on her right away. Bring her in. She's helping to copy and clear positive effects. You bring her in with Magneto. Magneto's got his Magnetic Vortex, which is the enemy team-wide blind, which is great. So there is some nice synergy there, too. Uh, Kate Bishop is an interesting one. If you've built up Young Avengers at all, it, it's not a bad option. But if you've 
ignore war defense, you probably haven't built up, Kate. So you could probably kick this one off to the side. One that's really standing out to me, though, is going to be Night Nurse. And because I have Shadowland, because I went hard on Shadowland when they first arrived, I've got a very strong Night Nurse here. Eventually, I'll finish upgrading her ISO here. But, you know, Night Nurse, uh, she's a very decent healer. She's got two abilities here. Like, she can flip in negative effects on herself and Shadowland allies, applying regeneration to each ally, healing all allies for 15% of her max health. She's got a decent amount of max health, too, so, you know, that's not bad. And then you got her first day, which clears negative effects most injured ally and adjacent allies, and then call the ally with the highest damage to attack the primary target. So, uh, you know, there is some nice stuff there. She's also applying speed down here, and this will also synergize nicely with Iceman if you are bringing him in. She applies that speed down on for two turns on her basic, and then, you know, on her on her turn, 25% chance to heal the most injured ally. So she's got uh, she's got a decent amount of healing sustainability. She's probably, in my opinion, the best healer in this in this uh, on, the, on this team. Scarlet Witch is a nice secondary healer, but Scarlet Witch also you know is able to prolong and apply defense down on her ultimate. This this special here, defense and deflect up to all allies, redistributes health, heals herself 100% of her max health, and then she can kind of spread out negative effects, which eh. But, uh, but yeah, she's, uh, she's not a bad character either. She got that reworth, a nice stat boost. She has very respectable damage now. But, uh, you know, Scarlet Witch plus Ghost Rider plus Morbius, that's, that's kind of like the holy trio of the Disciple tag. Because you get the Supernatural slash Dark Hunter stuff going on here. Morbius and Ghost Rider are both Dark Hunters, Supernatural with Ghost Rider and with Scarlet Witch. And whenever there's negative effects flying around, which there will be a lot flying around depending on who you bring in, you're going to get a lot of speed bar with a Supernatural and Dark Hunter character. So Ghost Rider, Morbius, and Scarlet Witch, I think are by far the best three you can bring in and, and then uh, kind of complement them with characters like Night Nurse. Doctor Strange would be an interesting one. If you've got Black Bolt too, Black Bolt should be great too. Black Bolt is going to have some nice synergy. We talked about Yo-Yo earlier. You know, uh, applying an offense down if there's no protectors around. That could be an issue if you're bringing in Nick Fury because the summons with him that brings in shield security, which is a protector. And then that means you're not getting the offense down with Yo-Yo. But Yo-Yo and Black Bolt have great synergy because of the basic with Yo-Yo gain assist from a random inhuman ally. You bring in Black Bolt. Black Bolt does a ton of damage. And yeah, he starts burping people when they fall below 20% max health. He deals plenty of damage. There's nothing wrong with, uh, with bringing in Black Bolt at that point. So... You know, Yo-Yo, Black Bolt, bring in, like, Black Widow, or, like, Ghost Rider, Morbius, Night Nurse. There's, there's plenty of good options here. Iceman's going to be, like, a solid fifth that you can plug in anywhere as well. There's plenty of good options here. Um, in terms of bad options, number one, Ultimus, Mysterio, Cable, Korath, and Shocker. Those are five characters you should absolutely not consider bringing in. None of them really do a lot. Uh, I mean, use Sinister Six or some Legendaries, but you don't need to gear up Mysterio that much. Ultimus is kind of useless. Shocker is another is another Sinister Six character here, but you don't really need him. Korath you don't use at all, except for the Payday event with Mercenaries. And Cable you use with X-Force, but you know X-Force has has long, uh, long been power crap, so you don't really need to build up Cable much anymore. And he does get the nice speed bar on spawn, but... I'm not, uh, I'm not really going to consider bringing him in. So really, at the end of the day, your Supernatural characters slash Dark Hunters, Ghost Rider, Morbius, Scarlet Witch, bring in like Night Nurse, bring in Iceman. That's going to be pretty good too. And I mean, it goes without saying, Strange Heartless is going to be a good option here too. But really, if you're free to play, you're not going to be able to use Heartless in this event, which is an odd design choice in my opinion. Uh, maybe it's to help push them s to sell more Heartless Strange offers, which, eh, I guess, I don't know. But he's one of those characters that's going to have some nice power to him. And I've talked about before, like, he's got some decent synergy with Dark Hunters, all those negative effects. You get his ultimate going, and this thing slaps. Like, now at where I've got him at, I've seen, like, 600, 700k crits with that ultimate on each character. So, you know, Strange has got some respectable damage, going to do a lot of damage, especially with that ultimate, but if uh, if you haven't paid for his offers, you're not going to have him for this event. So, you know, it's really one that I would not recommend, uh, or it's one that I would recommend, but only if you've bought the offers for him. If you're free to play, 
I would I would honestly kind of consider some other options. Though, you know, unless you can get him unlocked in time, which I don't think most people will, I, I would just not worry about Strange Heartless for this event. But, you know, that's going to kind of wrap it up on my end. I want to hear from you guys. Who are you guys bringing in to Pocket Dimension for this round? Is there any synergies you guys think I missed? Something that I should have brought up? Let me know down below. But as always, if you guys have enjoyed this video, make sure that like button, share, and subscribe. I will see you guys next time.